Natural wonders can reveal a ton of secrets about history. Such is the case with ice cores they contain samples of what life was like for humanity many years ago. And when scientists analyzed ice cores from Mount Kilimanjaro to figure out why the ice fields were shrinking, they found something completely unaccepted. The fragments inside the huge frozen blocks ended up supporting a well-known biblical story, proving that science and religion can go hand in hand. You're not going to believe the biblical secret they unearth. Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. For many years, scientists have been drilling into glaciers and ice sheets by hand and with special machinery to extract the cores. The ice gives them a better understanding of history and humanity. With these methods, they're able to grab ice from over two miles beneath the surface. The elements of that ice may have been on Earth for as long as 800,000 years. How cool is that? Over time, many ice fields and glaciers have formed. With each layer that's added, a record of the climate during that time is created. Ice cores give lots of information about the conditions of the planet, and they can help us have a better understanding of events that happened in history that we don't know much about. Sometimes they even match up with stories from the Bible, proving that some biblical things may have actually happened. The ice cores from Mount Kilimanjaro did just that. The findings from the giant frozen blocks ended up supporting a story straight from the Old Testament that we bet you're familiar with. The connection is quite remarkable. It's nothing short of extraordinary. It dates back many thousands of years ago to a period of time way before humans started exploring the highest single freestanding mountain in the world. Mount Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania's Kilimanjaro National Park, which is a popular hiking and climbing destination. Each year, almost 30,000 people visit Mount Kilimanjaro, and over 15,000 people come to hike one of the highest mountains in the world. But due to its shrinking glaciers and ice fields, it's been the subject of many scientific studies. In fact, the glaciers and ice fields are projected to completely disappear between 2025 and 2035. Mount Kilimanjaro has three peaks, which were formed from volcanoes that are currently inactive. There's Kibo, which is the highest at 16,893 and the only dormant volcano that could erupt again. There's also Mwenzi at 16,893 feet and Shira, the lowest, at 13,140 feet. Shira started being active around 2.5 million years ago, and it has a large plateau that's surrounded by the remnants of its caldera, which is the edge of a volcanic mountain. Over the years, the caldera has been reduced due to erosion. Both Kibo and Mwenzi's activity is much more recent. They started erupting about one million years ago. Kibo and Mwenzi have a plateau between them, which is known as the Saddle, with an altitude of about 14400 feet. Kibo's rugged peaks also have very interesting features. They include secondary summits, ridges, and pinnacles that were created through eroding and natural elements like wind and rain. Kibo, the highest of Kilimanjaro's three peaks, is now dormant but it could erupt in the future. Kibo last erupted between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago. The last activity created the current Kibo Summit Crater. We know this from the form of fumaroles breaches in the rock's crater that emit gases. Within Kibo's caldera, there's Roish Crater, which was named after mountaineer Gustav Roish, following his 25th climb of the mountain. While Mount Kilimanjaro has been familiar to East African people for thousands of years, it wasn't until 1848 that Europeans got a closer look at it. German missionaries Johann Kraff and Johannes Rebmann were the first Europeans known to attempt to reach the mountain and report its existence. Rebmann wrote an entry in his diary, documenting what they saw. This morning, at 10 o'clock, we obtained a clearer view of the mountains of Jaga, the summit of one of which was covered by what looked like a beautiful white cloud, as Hans Meyer reported in his 1891 book, Across East African Glaciers, an account of the first ascent of Kilimanjaro. After the German missionaries reached Kilimanjaro, many people tried to climb Kibo's peak, but they weren't successful. It wasn't until over 40 years later in 1889 that anyone reached Kibo's summit. Hans Meyer and Ludwig Pertscheller were the lucky men who can say they were the first to reach the south side of the mountain's crater. This happened to be Meyer's third attempt, and this one was perfectly planned. They established campsites with food supplies so multiple attempts at the top could be made. Even still, 
It was almost 25 more years until any European reached the summit of Moenzi. This climb was even more technically difficult, and it was eventually made by Germans Fritz Klute and Eduard Oler in 1912. Since then, adventure lovers from all over the world have ventured to Kilimanjaro to try and climb the highest mountain in Africa, making it one of the most popular tourist destinations. Mount Kilimanjaro stands at over 19,000 feet, and it's the highest mountain in Africa and the highest single freestanding mountain above sea level in the world. Its height explains why it's covered in snow and glaciers, even though it's in the tropics and not far from the equator. At night, the temperatures on Kilimanjaro's slopes and summit can get as low as negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But despite these frigid temperatures, the ice fields on top of the mountain have been shrinking. While this phenomenon is nothing new, as it's been happening for most of the 20th century, it's occurring at a more rapid pace. Some scientists even believe that the ice will disappear completely in the near future. So, they've taken extreme measures to try and get to the bottom of why the ice fields are shrinking. Back in 2000, a team led by Ohio State University geologist Lonnie Thompson headed to the slopes of Kilimanjaro to get some answers. Thompson and his colleagues ended up camping out on Mount Kilimanjaro for more than a month to retrieve ice cores from the mountain. But getting the samples proved to be a much more difficult task than they could have ever anticipated. Collecting them quickly turned into a complete logistical nightmare. Before they could even gather the ice samples, the scientists had to first go through many difficult obstacles. They had to get 25 official permits from Tanzanian agencies before they could even start the drilling. After the team was given the go-ahead, they then needed to get their equipment up the mountain to the drilling site, which was above 19300 feet. The task wasn't simple, and they needed to hire porters to help. In total, there ended up being 92 porters to get the heavy lifting done. After the permits were gotten and the holes were finally drilled, six cores from the mountain were collected. The team brought back 705 feet of frozen ice core ranging in lengths from 30 to almost 270 feet to Ohio State University's Bird Polar Research Center. And of course, the ice was stored in the freezer at the university. Now that the ice was brought back to the university, Thompson and his colleagues were ready to analyze it further. Two years later, Thompson and his team published a paper titled Kilimanjaro Ice Core Records – Evidence of Holocene Climate Change in Tropical Africa. Their original aim was to study climate change's impact on Kilimanjaro's ice fields, but what they discovered linked science with ancient history and religion. Using advanced dating methods, they found a spike in chlorine-36, an isotope left behind by nuclear bomb testing, in the early 1,950 seconds. This radioactive marker helped confirm the age of the ice and allowed scientists to trace deeper into its layers, revealing an extraordinary climatic history. Their analysis uncovered evidence of three major droughts in Africa. The first occurred 8,300 years ago and lasted 500 years. A second happened 5,200 years ago. But it was the third drought about 4,000 years ago and lasting 300 years that stood out the most. Historical records link this period to a devastating drought in Egypt, threatening the empire's stability. This same period aligns with the story of Joseph from the book of Genesis, also found in the Torah and Quran. Joseph, the eleventh son of Jacob, was favored by his father, sparking jealousy among his brothers. He was eventually sold into slavery and taken to Egypt. Joseph was bought by Potiphar, an Egyptian official. After a false accusation by Potiphar's wife, he was imprisoned. While incarcerated, Joseph gained a reputation for interpreting dreams accurately, including those of fellow inmates, the Pharaoh's cupbearer and chief baker. When the Pharaoh himself experienced a troubling dream, seven sickly cows consuming seven healthy ones and wilted ears of corn devouring good ones, no one could interpret it. That's when the cupbearer remembered Joseph's gift, prompting the Pharaoh to summon him. Joseph interpreted the dream as a prophecy. Egypt would face seven years of abundance, followed by seven years of famine. Impressed, the pharaoh appointed him vizier. Joseph advised storing surplus grain during the good years, enabling Egypt to survive the famine. This tale aligns with what Thompson's team found. Ice core data showed that around 4,000 years ago, a major drought occurred marked by a thin layer of dust matching the famine described in Genesis. Other historical accounts confirm this period was one of great hardship, 
threatening Egypt's rule and transforming the Sahara into an uninhabitable desert. It's rare for science and religion to intersect so clearly, but in this case, the biblical account seems to reflect historical climate patterns. While not everyone interprets religious texts literally, some stories may contain factual elements rooted in real events. Could such a drought happen again? Thompson believes so. Whatever happened to cause these dramatic climate changes in the past could certainly occur again, he said. Today, with 70% of the world's population living in the tropics, the impact would be even more severe. Understanding past climate events is crucial to preparing for the future. When Thompson and his team climbed Mount Kilimanjaro to study shrinking ice fields, they didn't expect to uncover a story that echoed the Bible. This rare convergence of science and religion reveals how ancient texts might be more than myth they may hold clues to real historical events. We can't wait to see what other historical treasures are unearthed in the future and the biblical secrets they'll reveal.